Hello, and welcome to another exciting segment of Open Dialogue. Ladies, I just want to get right into this. And I'm just going to start it by saying $20 million security conference UN nation come on people I mean we have people losing their jobs we have people having to go on furloughs we're talking about universal health care and we're footing the bill of 20 million dollars I mean I guess I'm supposed to be neutral on a United Nations security conference talk to me because I, I wanna, need for you to talk to me on this if one. I might I want to know where the UN's money is in all of this. Why don't they have an allocation to provide their own security wherever they go, wherever their meetings are, throughout the world? They meet in various places. They need to have a budget for this. I, they think, I think it's important that we do provide the security. First of all, it was our decision to have the meeting in the United States, which we didn't have to do. Secondly, we have to make sure that our leaders are secure when they go to other nations. Mm -hmm. We want those countries to provide that security for our people. And it would be an international incident if anything were to happen to any of these leaders that have come here. Well, I think it's one thing to provide the security and the trained staff, but paying right. for it. I think it should come from a UN budget. It's They've got a budget, they've got financing, they they need to pay a for it. Absolutely, and, and my point would be, and Charlotte, I recognize um, your position, but you say that we volunteer to have the conference. So I'm already concerned because our leaders should really know the state that we're in and why we are the mega global of the world we're just not in a position to continue to do business as usual and asking our taxpayers uh, to take a $20 million hit so we can host. I I'm not talking about the security, but we can host this grand affair. I, I take issue to that. Well, I think we probably need to show the world that we still are the number one leader country-wise in this world. But and I think, I think hosting it puts well, we, forth that too. I, I have to interject. I, I kind of agree with both you guys, Charlotte and Holly, only because it's like, okay, where is the, the UN part in this? Why aren't they paying for some of this? But then I do understand that we are this superpower, quote unquote, and we should be hosting something like this and we should provide security. So I'm kind of at an indifference. Well, I, I think I go back again. We already provide 22% of the UN's budget. Mm -hmm. So we are contributing an awful lot already. Right. So we can provide this tr highly trained security. Why can't they help pay for it exactly. and supplement what our taxpayer dollars? I'm not saying we shouldn't not participate in that, but 100% I don't think that that's I very assume, I assume whenever there's a meeting, then I assume that that country picks up the tab. I don't assume that the UNN is contributing in those other years well, where they, well, they should. are taking where, uh, place. They, I right. think they should. It should be a part of it. It should be a part of their budget. It's, and, and, you know, and actually, Charlotte, you made a statement that I'd like for us to maybe talk about. You said that um, we have these world leaders here, and when, when our leaders go to another country, we want to make sure that they are secure. Is that really the case? We, we, we could be very clear and very honest that there are some places that our leaders would go that because they are leaders, they will give them security, but that would not necessarily be, you know, at the top of the list. So why should we? No, I think there is great security because you haven't heard of any incidents with regards to our leaders. But what I think is really funny about this whole incident is the Qaddafi, for example, who, mm -hmm. who was coming, everybody's upset about him being here, no hotel wanted to give him a room, that he wanted to pitch a tent in Central Park, which of course <laughs> was a problem. They said, right. no, it's funny that, I mean, I wonder who said to him, oh, it's very safe in Central Park. <laughs> exactly. So now he's staying at the Libyan mission, and a few days ago there was a New Yorker walking his dog, and his dog, Maggie, peed on the red carpet that they had laid out for Gaddafi, which is very <laughs> funny. It's like putting across the sediment of the United exactly. States. How so they had to like, cut off the pee area. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. That's See, that topic. always speaks to We shouldn't have had <laughs> the like, then it wouldn't have peed on the there red carpet go. if we would have been on And then Ahmadinejad, <laughs> his hotel has been announced publicly, and right. if you're trying to provide security for someone, why do you want to tell the world where he's staying. Right. It's like saying he's staying here, his room number is this, the key's <laughs> under the rug. But, but don't go. Don't <laughs> yeah, but don't you bother know, him. Ladies, I, I, what I love about this show is that we always engage in intelligent conversations. And whether you agree or disagree, most importantly is that you have an opinion. Open Dialogue is now closed. <laughs>